everyone. Today we are making pizza on the grill. This is one of my favorite things to do in spring and summer. As soon as it's warm outside, we are firing up the grill and eating pizza out there. It's so good. So the first thing you have to do is you have to make the dough and you need to do a little bit of planning here because you need to do this about an hour, hour and a half before you actually need it because it needs to rise. So we are, um, I like to use the KitchenAid mixer to, to do the dough, but you can knead it by hand if you want to, or if um, you don't have a KitchenAid, it's completely up to you. So the first thing we're doing is we are gonna put in one and two thirds cup of water, and I want it to be a little lukewarm, not hot, that's gonna kill your yeast, just slightly warm. Uh, I already have one cup. And then two thirds. Okay, so I'm gonna also put my yeast in there and you're gonna use two teaspoons of yeast. And you can use just active dry yeast, or if you have instant yeast, you can use that also. And what we're gonna do when we put it in here is we're just gonna wait a few minutes and let this just dissolve in there. And it'll take just not too long, just maybe like a minute or so. After your yeast has dissolved into your water, you wanna add one fourth of a cup of olive oil. And then you want to add five cups of flour. And I've already measured it out because it, it's a lot. <laughs> And then I'm gonna just mix it with the dough hook on low for five to seven minutes. You're just looking for it to form into a dough ball. Our dough's done. I'm going to check it. I'm not the best dough maker, but when you press your finger in here, I'll pull it out so you can see it. So when you press your finger in, you want it to just bounce back a little bit. And so it's springy, it's good to go. Now is where we let our dough rise. And like I said, that's gonna be like an hour, an hour and a half. And so basically from here, I just take and I tear it and it should make about eight pizzas. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and tear it into eight little pieces. If you have like a pastry or dough cutter, scraper, then you could use that here too. These don't have to be perfect. You just want them kind of put together because they're going to um, rise while they're sitting there anyway. So no need to be perfect. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in this dish so it doesn't stick to the bottom. And just kind of rub it around. And then as I put each ball in there, I'm just going to give it a little turn. And that way there's going to be oil on both sides. Um, this is going to help it not stick while it's rising, but it also will help it not stick as much when we go to grill it. And I can't wait to show you guys how we grill it. Um, anyway, you'll see what happens. It's kind of fun. It's something I kind of redid the way 
I grilled pizzas last year and worked out really well, so. And this is super fun because, I don't know, I just like to have everybody outside around the picnic table, um, maybe playing some cornhole. I don't know. I, we're outside a lot all summer and spring, so it's just a fun thing to do so you don't have to come inside early to have dinner. Okay, once they're in there, I'm going to take a damp um, rag, dish towel, and I'm just going to cover it up. So these are just going to sit here, rise for an hour, hour and a half. Uh, I'm going to come back once those have risen, and we're going to be outside and grilling them. And we're going to show you that process and everything. So I'll see you then. So we've come out to the grill so we can grill our pizza. Our dough has finished rising. And so the first thing I'm going to do is take the skillet. I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil in there. Um, the skillet is pretty well seasoned, so I'm not really that worried about things sticking. And then I'm going to go ahead and just set this on the grill. And I'm, we have a direct heat side and an indirect heat side. So I'm just going to sit it on the indirect while I get my dough ready. So I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil on here just so I can roll my dough out and it not stick to the surface. So I only brought two um, dough balls out here. So uh, we'll save the others for later. <laughs> so I know some people have some fancy skills where they, you know, can toss it up in there and all the fun stuff. Um, I just kind of smush it out into something that resembles a circle. Uh, it's never an actual circle, so hopefully your pizza is a little prettier, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So I just kind of smush it out. And a lot of times I'll kind of smush it so the uh, outer edge may be a little bit thicker than the center, just like a traditional pizza. But if you like a thicker crust or a thinner crust, you can kind of um, judge. Okay, so I'm going to just put that on here. And then I'm going to move this to the direct heat for maybe like a minute-ish. You're just trying to harden the underside just a little bit. And then we're going to flip it over, put all the toppings on there, and uh, then put it back in here so the cheese can melt and all the good stuff. Let me check it one more time. And the second one will always cook quicker because by that point, our... Um, pan is going to be super hot. Okay. As you can see, the crust is just slightly golden, um, not super cooked. Now I'm going to sauce it up. It's going to get saucy in here. And this is where you can just have fun and use whatever kind of toppings you like. Um, we are going to use some grass-fed ground beef, some Kerrygold cheese, mushrooms, kale and spinach, uh, and kind of make it a hamburger pizza, a cheeseburger pizza. And I like to put a little salt in there. And then you can layer it any way you like. I like to put all of the goodies underneath the cheese. So I cut some fresh mushrooms. I'm gonna throw some, and this ground beef, I actually cooked ahead of time. So, and just, it's straight from the refrigerator. So don't feel like you have to heat it up. It's gonna do that on the pizza itself. And if you are really quick about this, you can probably do it in the skillet itself. But um, sometimes I'm a little slow, so I just uh, do it over the plate. Okay. I am going to go ahead and put it in the skillet before I add the cheese, just because sometimes it gets a little floppy <laughs> going in. Boop. See, just like that, some of my goodies fell off. There we go. Okay. 
So I'm going to put a lid on it, scooch it back over to direct heat, and then just wait. And this is, this is depending on if you like a super crunchy crust or if you like it a little softer. Um, this is where you're just going to kind of watch it, but it's going to take several minutes. And you'll see the cheese on the top starting to melt. So we'll wait for that. Let's check on it and see how it's going. It's looking good. Um, I'm going to keep testing or checking the bottom of the crust because I don't want it to get overcooked. And when it starts getting, like right now it's starting to get a little crusty. Um, I'm going to let go a little bit longer and then just move it off direct heat. So it still continues to melt the cheese and everything, but the crust doesn't get too burnt. So, oh, that looks perfect. Okay. Oh, that looks amazing. Mm. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is amazing. It's like the perfect crunch, the perfect pizza. It's the perfect way to spend a night outside in the summer. Um, you should go try it. Grab your family, grab your friends, go outside, make pizza on the grill. It's amazing. Pick your favorite toppings and enjoy. I hope you love it. Bye. Have a great day.